Insulin, taxes, and a president is assassinated. All on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is April 15th, 2024. It is the 106th day of the year. You got 260 days left. It is the 16th Monday in the 16th week and the 28th day of spring. There are 67 days left until summer. Today is National Tax Day. They call it National Tax Day. That's actually the term for it. I think it was Robin Williams that said there should be like a coupon you get after you pay your taxes to go to the local bar or massage parlor. Oddly enough, it's also National Rubber Eraser Day, which is great. You erase all those mistakes you're making on your taxes if, if you're actually filling out the form and not doing it online. All right, let's take a look what April 15th has given us. 1865, President Abraham Lincoln dies after being shot the previous evening by actor John Wilkes Booth. Three hours later, Vice President Andrew Johnson is sworn in as the president. Now, obviously, this should be the deep dive, but we did it the year before last. We'll give it another year or so, and maybe we'll do it again as the deep dive. 1912, the British passenger liner RMS Titanic sinks in the North Atlantic at 2 a.m., two hours and 40 minutes after being hit by an iceberg. It actually hit the iceberg. The iceberg wasn't motoring around. Only 710 of the 2,224 passengers and crew on board survive. You know, that movie Titanic that came out in the 90s is still to this day just an amazing movie. Back around that time, there was a series of movies that came out that had a historical background, but the movie had very little to do with what was actually going on with the history of something. Perfect example, there was a movie called The Black Dahlia, and I think it came out around 2005. That movie was called The Black Dahlia. It had this picture or the movie poster looked like it was part of the whole Black Dahlia murder scene. The movie had very little to do with the Black Dahlia. It was about a cop movie and a love story going on at the time of the Black Dahlia, but you really, it really wasn't focused on the Black Dahlia, even though it was called The Black Dahlia. And then you had Pearl Harbor with Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnick. That came out. Yeah, they did show the attack on Pearl Harbor, but this was focused on the friends, Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnick, whatever their characters' names were, and some love story they had going on. It was stupid. The attack scene, you felt like they threw it in there because they had to. I was thoroughly disappointed in the movie Pearl Harbor. Back when I was a stand-up comedian and around that time, there was a Japanese comedian I knew, and he had the greatest joke for it. He's all, I took my grandfather to see the movie Pearl Harbor. It was really embarrassing. He kept cheering at the wrong time. But the Titanic, it stuck with the movie. There was a love scene, and there was some other things going on, and, you know, romance and all that good stuff. They really focused on the characters, but it also was part of the Titanic movie and part of the Titanic storyline. They didn't just use the Titanic as a backdrop. 1923, insulin becomes generally available for use by people with diabetes. The discovery and subsequent use of insulin for diabetes marks a pivotal moment in medical history, transforming a once fatal diagnosis into a manageable condition. Prior to the 1920s, type 1 diabetes was essentially a death sentence. You had a few years to live after diagnosis. This is because these people's body just couldn't metabolize glucose after a pancreatic failure. This changed dramatically in 1921 when Canadian scientists Frederick Banting and Charles Best, working at the University of Toronto, successfully isolated insulin from the pancreas of dogs. Banting's hypothesis, which posited that Pancreatic extract could replace the missing insulin in diabetic patients. This proved to be revolutionary. After refining the extraction process, they administered the first successful injection of insulin to a human patient, 14-year-old Leonard Thompson, in 1922. The widespread distribution of insulin began soon after its discovery, thanks to the collaboration between the University of Toronto and the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly, which developed methods to produce insulin on a large scale. The partnership facilitated the global dissemination of insulin, dramatically improving the survival rates and quality of life for diabetics worldwide. Over the decades, insulin therapy has evolved significantly. The 1930s saw the introduction of long-acting insulin, providing patients with a more stable glucose control option. In the 1970s, DNA technology led to the development of synthetic human insulin, which is less likely to cause reactions than animal insulin. 
Today, advances continue with the development of ultra-long-lasting insulins and insulin pumps. This is just making diabetes easier to live with and easier to manage. Just recently, they've done a lot to bring down the price. It's been ridiculous over the years. In 2021, a study by the Rand Corporation found that the average price of a vial of insulin in the United States was $98. So if you didn't have insurance, it was $100 bucks to buy a vial. In Canada, that same vial was $12. And that's how it is in most countries outside of the U.S. So the average American insulin user spent about $3,490 on insulin in 2018 compared to $725 a year in Canada. It was ridiculous and, in my opinion, criminal. There's a lot that goes into the new law that brought down the price. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. And I'm sure if I just touched on what's going on, it's going to cause some problems and give me a lot of grief. But the few things I do know is they're bringing it down for Medicare patients and they're bringing it, trying to bring it down across the board. 1947, Jackie Robinson plays his first game for the Brooklyn Dodgers, breaking baseball's color line. 2013, two bombs explode near the finish line of the Boston Marathon in Boston killing three people and injuring 264. That was sad. I couldn't believe that happened. It was, you know, not amazing, like a good thing. It was just amazing that they did this, and it's just nobody would expect it. You know, and all the terrorist things going on, it, you think they would have caught this. Two brothers walking around with giant backpacks, setting down crockpots in crowds of people. Premiered on April 15, 1990 in Living Color. This was a comedy sketch show similar to like Saturday Night Live, but it was created by the two Waynes brothers. This sometimes controversial sketch show, can't even speak today, was produced as a response to Saturday Night Live and its mostly white cast. It was a great series. I mean, Marlon and Damon Waynes was on there, along with Jim Carrey. Jennifer Lopez was one of the dancers. What I find interesting is they made it as a response to, like I said, the all-white cast of Saturday Night Live, but the standout star was Jim Carrey, like one of two white cast members. One of the creators, Keenan Ivory Waynes, left the show in 1992 after Fox repeatedly tried to censor the show. The show ran three seasons without him, a total of five seasons and 127 episodes. Born on April 15th, 1452, yes, we're going way back, Leonardo da Vinci. Renaissance artist, inventor, polymath, musician, and architect who painted the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. He also devised such futuristic technologies as tanks, concentrated solar power, and adding machines. He also spearheaded some vital breakthroughs in anatomy, civil engineering, optics, and hydrodynamics. He was classified as a master by the Guild of St. Luke when he was just 20 years old. His sketches of flying machines, while non-fictional, stand as an example of scientific thought, creativity, and making da Vinci the ideal Renaissance man. Died on April 15th, we already talked about President Lincoln, but 2019, Georgia Engel, actress best known for playing Georgette Franklin Baxter on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. She also portrayed Bat McDougal, the mother-in-law in Everybody Loves Raymond. After the end of Everybody Loves Raymond, she returned to the stage, appearing alongside Barbara Eden, member Jeannie, in a female-centric version of The Odd Couple. She died on April 15, 2019, at the age of 70 in Princeton, New Jersey. Some reports say she died on April 12th. Her friend, John Quilty, told the New York Times that the cause of death was unknown as Engel did not consult doctors due to her religious beliefs. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. And go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.